My name is Douglas Winnick. I'll be your guest for a few minutes, if I may. I'd like to tell you about a new invention of mine, this 3D camera. We call it the straight line scan camera. It's been developed for the purpose of making original color three-dimensional pictures, which can be projected up to almost any size and viewed by anyone with uh, normal eyesight. You do not have to have special glasses to see the three-dimensional pictures. Our picture is made on a piece of film that is uh, embossed with an optical surface that is actually below visibility. You don't see the surface, but you look through it when you look at the picture. The picture is made in this camera by simply putting a piece of film of this nature in, into the camera film holder uh, and uh, allowing the camera to take a picture of the subject, and in this case you, uh, it'll, it'll move a few inches as, as you see, uh, it'll travel in a straight line while the, while the shutter is open, and then it'll return and you're ready to take a second shot. The, this camera has been built and will be used for commercial photography primarily. Uh, we will we are already making eight by ten pictures in it and then blow it, we'll plan to blow them up to even up to six feet wide and uh, you should be able to uh, walk into a into a museum or walk into a display point see these huge photo murals in full third dimension without the necessity of special viewing glasses. As you walk along you'll be able to look around objects as you as you as you do here. This camera is actually looking around objects while I was taking the picture. But nevertheless, I worked with Kodak in their research lab as a young draftsman. I had learned to draw fairly well on a drawing board. And uh, got interested immediately in, in the depth of the photographic sciences, chemistry and the optics. I spent four years learning, as one of the Kodak men, learning the Kodak methods uh, starting with the drafting board and the machine shop and finally in the camera business. Uh, I would sit at my desk after the fourth year and look at a great big hot, a great big uh, water jug, five gallon water jug that happened to be in the sunlight and at certain hours I would look at it and marvel and realize that I was with one eye I could see the jug from one side I could see things on the wall amplified for this eye. I looked at it with the other eye and I saw a different picture. And so I realized that binocular vision was pretty fascinating. Although I had been impressed by the stereoscope, I had never quite realized that a lenticular cylinder would uh, be a good convenient way of presenting something different to each eye. And so I got too big for my britches. I became an inventor and uh, filed a patent later was uh, I wanted to get away from Kodak because I didn't want Kodak to own my concept. I was eager to set up my own business and uh, I had the invention in mind even though it was at a pre pre uh, preliminary stage. Filed a patent and much to my astonishment the patent was issued and when we knew that I had a patent then I invited two or three other fellows from Kodak to come down and we set up a, a uh, photographic engineering business, we called it. None of us were, <laughs> were professional engineers, but we appointed ourselves to that position, and we successfully got contract after contract starting 1934. And in 1959, we were still in business together, uh, designing and building all sorts of uh, contraptions uh, for various companies, cameras and uh, experimental devices. It gave us a shop of our own and we were able to build uh, the experimental cameras that I've talked about. Aerial cameras, x-ray equipment, and medical equipment, biological cameras, and so forth. So we became experts whether we were when we started or not. And in 1959 I sold out, came out to the west coast, brought my young wife with me, and uh, we, uh, I'll have to explain, I'd been married before, but uh, 
she was my secretary in New York, and when I sold my business, my ex-wife had decided to get married to somebody else as soon as she could on her own. So we came out and we raised five children that are of my family and, and her child, so we've raised six out here in Palo Alto and uh, put the school, put them through schools in Palo Alto. Not very colorful picture, but uh, the, uh, for 15 years after we got out here, we both worked with the uh, Lockheed Space and Missiles uh, in uh, E-5 and in the space programs for a number of years. And I had a moonlighting group that I set up with Lockheed men and Westinghouse men. Uh, and I had organized this, we called it Trivision Incorporated. Uh, we branched off into medical x-ray and uh, I spent 15 years uh, uh, of this period uh, with my radiologist friends. We had chief radiologists of 13 different hospitals including Stanford and the University of uh, Berkeley and so forth. These radiologists, each in char chairman of their own department of radiology, were members of our little x-ray company. I was the founder of it and have spent 15 years working with these radiologists on three-dimensional x-ray and have succeeded with that, have licensed uh, hospitals. All was doing research with the equipment, but nevertheless we were successful in that sense. In 1978, uh, although our company was still doing well in the x-ray business in a small way, but we were doing well, I decided to come down to Carmel, live down here, and set up a photographic research department, or a new in, in, uh, entity. Nora and I went down, my wife and I went down to Los Angeles and succeeded in getting the Mattel Toy Company interested in us. And we came back with $300,000 start money to do a seven month study on video games, 3D video games. And we went out to Carmel Village and leased a house out there on the hill and uh, set up a lab in the buildings there in, in the village hired a few people, spent seven months of the happiest months of my life uh, working with the Mattel engineers and the computer experts and uh, some of the movie people, uh, making three-dimensional pictures, large stills and experimental uh, complex units for what we thought would become a video game industry.